In this video, we're going to look at how to construct line shapes based on data envelopes. And the idea is that a line shape from these data can then be included as part of a nonlinear least squares fitting. And if we have samples, as in this case where we have a set of 11 samples, that are in different proportions of two ionic liquids that are chemically different and therefore the carbon 1s envelope will be different between both of these in such a way that when we use them as part of a fit we can then work out the different proportions of these mixtures of the two basic ionic liquids. Spectra measured from these samples are added to the same VAMAS file so that each row represents a new measurement from a new sample and these include a carbon 1s and also a nitrogen 1s and both of these would represent signature for the different materials. So this is the carbon 1s and we can see that fluorine bonded to carbon has produced an isolated peak and this is useful because we can see at a glance that where there should be a single peak in a single binding energy there are multiple peaks that are spread over binding energy. So this indicates there is some kind of sample charging. So if we were to perform a linearly squares approach without energy calibrating and performing some careful steps to make sure that the data bins align when we do a, a linearly squares calculation, there would be a problem. Hence, there is value in looking at these in this state, at least, where we use a nonlinear least squares approach that will allow shifts in the peak positions, and so the optimization should accommodate these types of shifts that we see in this envelope here. The pure forms of these ionic liquids are in measurement 1 and 11. So if I overlay these, these C1S spectra represent the two different forms that we might expect that should fit these other C1S data. So what I'm going to do is copy these so I've now got a pair of VAMAS blocks that represent the carbon 1S from these pure ionic liquids. And then I'm going to add a region. I need to add this region to both. So if I propagate from the one to the other, I'm left with two regions defining a background. And the idea of doing this is to background subtract these data so that the background influences go away and we're left with just a line shape that represents the signal that's coming from the photo emission from carbon 1s from both of these ionic liquids so on the test data property page there's a button that says background subtract so I've now applied the background subtraction to one of these and in order to apply the background subtraction to both I'm going to propagate so now I've got two VAMAS blocks and these are both background subtracted, but these are only background subtracted in the sense that the background instruction is given here. And what I want to do is preserve this. So I'm going to copy these. And I'm going to copy the process data only. So now I have four new VAMAS blocks, two of which represent the data in a processed form where there's no processing history. And the other two these have the processing history so if I reset these I then return to the original data whereas if I reset these two then nothing happens because these now are processed data that have been saved in the raw form of the VAMAS block so there's no going back to the original form for these two only these two were able to return and the idea is that I can now create a pair of line shapes and these are created by adding a prefix which is percent ampersand less than greater than to the block ID and when I say OK you can see the block ID has been updated and this is the name that I will use to assign a component that has a line shape that is based on these data in a peak model so I need to do the same again for this one and they must have different names so I'm going to leave the object index to indicate which one I'm dealing with so one has 28 the other has 20 so if I now save that 
again here they are so these are going to be my line shapes from data and just to verify that I've done the calculation correctly I'm going to introduce these as part of the data that I copied so here we have 28 I'm going to copy the name go to 28 I've got the background that was set up before I did the background subtraction I create a peak so there's a component I changed the name for the line shape to the VAMAS block that has the data that was background subtracted. So when I press return, it says fix the full width half maximum, and the answer to that question is yes, because we don't want to allow the full width half maximum to change when we have such a complex structure, such as a pair of peaks like this. So let's say fit, and then in principle, if we look at the residual, we've got a residual that is indicating we've got precision. So we'll do the same now for the other one and this involves using the line shape name creating a component entering the name pressing return and accepting the fourth half maximum as unity and then say fit and once again we get a remarkably good residual in terms of representing these data so having created two models and two line shapes, what we need to do is transfer these to other spectra. So let's select one. This is one towards the middle of this sequence. So we expect this to be similar proportions of the two ionic liquids. So this is a good target. And I will propagate. And I won't fit. So I'm propagating the regions, the components, not fitting so when I do this I should end up with a model that consists of a single component so I need to go to the other spectrum and copy the line shape and then say paste so now I've got within this VAMAS block that's displayed in the active tile two components one for each of these ionic liquids, we'll call that ionic liquid 2, and we'll call this one ionic liquid 1. So when I say fit, I end up with a residual that is based on a combination of the fact that there's noise within these line shapes and they are being fitted to a, a spectrum with noise, so it's not surprising it's greater than unity here. So this represents a fairly reasonable fit to these data. Let's now apply this model to all of these data in this sequence from 1 to 11 and I'll do that by propagating and this time I will fit because now in principle I have enough information to fit all of these data so let's test that by saying OK. The fits have been performed. We've got a a perfect fit for the first one which is what we expected and as we go down we should see a variation in the intensity of these peaks until we recover the original data so we're now modeling using nonlinear least squares the changes in the, these data envelopes that will accommodate shifts so if the if the whole spectrum is shifted by a small amount, because we're using nonlinear least squares, we're accommodating both area and potentially shifts within these data. To test whether these have worked, let's now perform a profile based on these components. So we'll go to the report spec page, we'll copy through the component names, and this will give us a list of the intensity of the different ionic liquids measured by these two components throughout the sequence and plotted against the experimental variable which is a sample ID. So let's apply and we end up with a table that indicates as a percentage we go from 100% to virtually zero and the other direction it goes 100% down to virtually zero again. And then we can see the trend if we create a profile and let's just display one of these. So now here we can see that the ionic liquid number 2 goes from 0 in sample 1 to 100% in sample 11 
and en route it seems to be following a straight line.